in this video a uh, first idea about how I want to develop a say 40 watt or 50 watt or perhaps even even 60 watt audio amplifier and when you follow my channel you will surely have seen that I've made a power a DC power supply that can work on approximately 110 volts so uh, that was the idea uh, to develop a amplifier that can work on this voltage say 80 volts perhaps even 90 volts etc uh, etc et of course I had to uh, order some transistors that could do that job uh, for an audio amplifier and I searched on the World Wide Web and at the uh, website of Regeld and Conrad in Germany and I found these two transistors that probably could do the job. Uh, it's the BD744C uh, and that is the PMP version and here is the BD743C that's the NPN version and I've chosen them by purpose because I saw uh, on the data sheet that they could amplify of course with uh, of course not not always with uh, high voltage and high current bipolar transistors the amplification factor is low and that means that they have to be driven into their base with a quite substantial current so this is my uh, is the first uh, photo that I made of this project working on the heat sinks I have used by purpose say kind of piece of aluminum more or less common and perhaps more interesting to show is that the whole circuit will be developed out of this schematic it's an audio amplifier for 5 watt up to approximately 40 watt and here is the schematic it works on 50 volts, not higher, otherwise uh, we, we have a kind of thermal runaway. And here is the text, so a part of the text, and here the text goes further, etc, etc. It's all in my book. Schematics to audio amplifiers and loudspeaker boxes. Uh, well, again the schematic and then I will leave this page to show all the photographs of the de development. So here's the first uh, photograph. By the way, this is the circuit at the moment, perhaps interesting to show. The two N transistors here are both NPN. This is a semi complementary end stage audio amplifier so we have two NPN transistors as end transistors and here we have two driver transistors one is of course a NPN transistor and one is a PMP transistor and here is the this transistor in the middle here we read a BC547 but of course with uh, when, when I want to make a amplifier that works on a much higher voltage, say 90 volts or so, that transistor of course cannot do that job. So that's the reason why I've used here also such a high voltage transistor. That will do the job of giving the two bases of the driver transistors the proper voltage, the proper quiescent current etc etc in such a circuit uh, we always have to do with say uh, a voltage drop between these two transistors 
drive and transistors that sets in a certain way the quiescent current, um, etc. etc. So, uh, well, let me show the photographs. Here is the first photograph. We now go to the next. The um, heatsink that used transistor. Again, the heatsinks. And the used transistors. I've used here a kind of metal hooks to mount them. And you can see these metal hooks here. Completely the same. Anyway. Uh, and here how I drill, say, uh, at first a hole and then tap uh, M3 uh, So this is an M3 tap for the bolts Here exactly the same, the two heat sinks and uh, here it is about making the surfaces very plain that's of course necessary when you want to mount a, a power transistor on a piece of aluminium. It must be completely flat. That's the reason why I made this photograph. Here you see a kind of sponge with that green material. That's the ideal material to make the surface of a heat sink completely flat. And then you can mount your transistors on it. And here again the same situation. Kind of water bath. Here that green sponge. Uh, uh, making that uh, aluminium plate here completely flat. To give it a good uh, warmth contact. So that the heat can flow away. And that's more or less millimeter work. So now the surfaces are completely plain. I can mount the transistors. Here is the tap and the hole that you have to drill for an M3 tap. And this is perhaps very interesting or in terms of electronics very important. This part of the circuit here is sure. So this is more or less these are more or less the end transistors that do the job that have to drive a big current into the loudspeaker. And this is one driver transistor and an end transistor and here is another driver transistor and an end transistor. Of course it's a uh, quasi complementary end stage. So uh, when I make this circuit at first the first thing to say is that it's not sure that it will work properly. But there is a good chance of success. Say 50% perhaps even 80% percent, percent. And the reason is that this circuit here was tested more or less endlessly the circuit out of my book the only say uh, aim of this new circuit is that I want to let it work on approximately 90 volts or so so to get more energy into the loudspeaker and of course when we are talking about these kinds of circuits um, Many of these circuits of power amplifiers are made with a double power supply, so a positive and a negative and a zero in between. That means that with a quite low voltage, say approximately 2 times uh, 30 volts, you can get a lot of energy out. But that's not the aim of this video, so perhaps don't criticize me on that. Uh, these are the first ideas. Completely classical and here we have um, a voltage divider and I want to refer to my books because I only have approximately 15 minutes now 
and I, I am now on 10 minutes in this video. I tested the transistors, that was very interesting. Tested the BD743 C and PN on its amplification, current amplification factor, and it was 40. Well, that proved to be okay when I looked at the data sheet and the website where I bought them. And on the website where you, where you see the information about these transistors, they say, for instance, the amplification factor is 40 up to 120. That's quite strange. Anyway, it's real. That's the other part of the story. So, uh, here again, testing the BD, uh, etc. All these transistors tested the same amplification facti factor 40. And here you see how I mount, mounted the transistor with some heat sink paste. And well, now I tested the PMP version, so the complementary transistor of uh, the earlier transistor. This is the complementary PMP transistor and its amplification factor is really 120. That's very interesting. So, uh, say uh, the brother has an amplification factor of 40 and the sister has an amplification factor of 120. So perhaps I have to do some adaptations uh, when developing this circuit. Uh, I have perhaps to do some adaptations to because the uh, say the amplification factor of, of the both the driver transistor, transistors is not equal. Could be a problem, could also be not a problem, but anyway. Here again, you see its amplification factor is approximately 140 or so. Well, and I found that all my bees the 744C PMP transistors had the same good 120 amplification factor. Here how the first setup was made uh, on a piece of wood, well varnished, and here the cooling plates. Perhaps I have to use a ventilator to cool them when it after all really works, and I'm more or less sure that it will work. And here again say some ideas about the functioning of the transistors. I have already told about that and here exactly the same. The BD743C NPN transistor 100 volt can handle according to the data sheet approximately 10 ampere, of course that's not real in a practical uh, amplifier situation, but anyway, no problem with that. So that was the final video. When you follow my channel you have seen that I've made a LED flasher, it still flashes after approximately 2 or 3 days. Also no problem with that. And well, here the transistors again. Uh, my only idea is study the data sheet on the World Wide Web. I have by purpose chosen these transistors because they are complementary. They can handle 100 volts and they can handle, handle quite a good current. Thanks for watching.